Should all countries be allowed to join the United Nations? I come from Korea. If the question means admitting Red China, I say no. I'm from Norway and I happen to disagree with uh, Nak Chung from Korea. I think that if uh, the Red China is not admitted in the United Nations, it will increase the threat of war. I come from the Philippines and I agree with the delegate from Korea. We can't let communist China in now. Australia is my country and I agree with Pierre. The United Nations can only promote world peace when the whole world belongs to it. Here to talk about the world we want are four 17-year-old students who have been in the United States just two weeks. First is Nak Chung Peck from Korea, then Per alias Pete Rustin from Norway, Roman Cruz Jr. from the Philippine Islands, and champion debater Leslie Scholes from Australia. Now, Per, if I heard you right, that you said it was going to increase the threat of war if we did not let communist China into the UN. You want to explain what you mean by that? Well, in order to understand my argument, I think we'll have to regard the purposes of the United Nations. The United Nations aim to uh, secure peace, and but as the roots of war often lie in economical problems, uh, I think that if um, the Red China is admitted in the United Nations, we would have a chance to let the subsidiary organs of the United Nations work in China and thereby to create better conditions of life because I think I don't think it is possible to secure peace while a large percent of 600 million uh, Chinese are starving or have bad uh, living conditions. But then that would mean that the Red Chinese government is not fulfilling its promise to the people. The communist government promises that it will alleviate the people from their sufferings and now you claim that the Chinese people are starving now do you think that a, a government that doesn't keep its promises to the people be worthy to be accepted to the United Nations I think that the Chinese government has the support of the people otherwise I don't think it would have been able to throw the nationalist government out to Formosa though I know that the present uh, red communist government has uh, was supported by Russia I think that <clears throat> if you regard on the conditions in Russia in 1917 and the present conditions today, you'll see large improvements and I think the same would happen to China. In my opinion, uh, uh, people as the Chinese, they don't need freedom yet, they need food and clothes. That is the main thing when you are starving, not freedom. Roman, also, uh, if you think uh, there are other Asian countries where the people are starving that are not under communist governments, so it really doesn't follow that we should exclude Red China just because the communist government has not as yet fulfilled their promise. Well, uh, I think the important thing is that communist China does not deserve a seat in the United Nations because they are not a peace-loving country as, uh, as pres prescribed in the Un Charter of the United Nations. And uh, I believe that even if we admit uh, Red China into the United Nations, it will not become a peaceful country. May, may I ask you, if uh, you say that communist China is not a um, peaceful country, would you say that Russia is a peaceful country? Well, Russia was uh, the ally, uh, ally of the United States and Great Britain and such countries when uh, the United Nations was formed. And I think uh, we would have a more effective uh, organization if we have only the peace-loving and cooperative c countries in the United Nations. Listen, are you saying that Russia then should be excluded from the United Nations? If possible. But then what's the use of the United Nations if it isn't to discuss? And to discuss, you've got to have two countries with different points of view. If you put out Russia, then who have you got to argue with? No one. And the United Nations well, is ineffective. <coughs> it would uh, be a farce. The United Nations would be a farce if you got Russia out. Well, we can tell the people with action. Well, uh, the United Nations, nations without the filibustering of the communist nations can be more effective and we can achieve more and then uh, the United Nations which can achieve more will mean more to the people who are starving as you said. Are you advocating the use of force by us to meet force? Well, not necessarily, but uh, if our freedom and our life is uh, 
threatened by, by the for use of force by other countries, we have to defend ourselves with force. But listen, do you think that we would gain, it would gain our democratic cause by using the methods of communism? That's what I, for instance, blame uh, Manus McCarty for. He doesn't seem to realize that by using the communist methods, he actually loses his cause. That's what we do well, and we <coughs> don't want to let China join an uh, organization as the United Nations. Well, it, it is one thing to use, force, uh, to use force in order to conquer other nations and rule it with their own methods. But it is still another that to, to defend ourselves with force when our freedom and our life is threatened. It's, there, um, I'm always reminded of the, the blood and the sweat and the tears with which we gain freedom. Well, in Korea, in Korea, for instance, we fought with blood against Japanese imperialism. Then after that, we fought uh, <coughs> suffering a million of casu casualties against communist aggression. And can you say that, uh, can you say that uh, you just, uh, you can just uh, give, the, give away this freedom simply because force is the method that communists use? May I ask you, do you think you could make peace by hating? For instance, let us say the Scandinavian countries, they were conquered by the Germans, but would you, we don't go on hating Germans. We realize that if we shall uh, um, gain peace in Europe, we have to accept Germany. I think you have to do the same in the Far East. Well, I could understand you. Uh, the people in Korea, they suffered a lot from uh, due to communist attacks and stuff like that. But still, I think you the sooner you forget it, the better it would be, because you're not supposed to think in one or two years, we are supposed to think in 20 or 50 years. Uh, of course it's true, we hate communism, but we don't, we don't hate the Russian, Chinese or North Korean people. <coughs> what we, th we hate is the communism, the ideology. Yes, but can't you see that, John, that we're offering something else instead of force, that the United Nations is set up so that we won't have to resort to force. Well, that's what we want. We, if we can admit uni China to the United Nations, then we're laying the foundation where we can discuss something and maybe we can do away with this force. Are you sure that, United, the, that Red China will avoid using force as soon as she becomes a member of the United Nations? Uh. We must remember that communist China is adhering to communistic principles and practices. And we see from the writings of Marx, Lenin and Engels and any of, from, and any of those communist bigwigs that force is the, the means to achieve their ultimate end, which is a classless society. If Red China is really communist, as she claims to be, then that means that she necessarily must adhere to, to communistic principles and practices, which is the use of force. No, I, I don't think that. You see, that, that's the, perhaps the principles that the leaders of Red China follow, and it's the, probably the principles that the, the leaders of Russia follow. But can't you see that the people the people in China and Russia, they don't want that. They, they followed communism because communism was the... Russia was the only country that turned to help China. Russia was the only country that offered them any hope of the people of gaining food. And that's what they were after. When they have that, then they're going to want more freedoms. They're going to want personal freedom and they're not going to be allowed to be dictated by a communist government all the time. And can you be sure that the red Chinese government is, has the support of the people? I I'm think I'm not quite sure on that point at all, because if they hadn't the sort of support of the people, who are the, su the people supporting? They're certainly not supporting this nationalist government yes, that we're but, allowing uh, into the but United but Nations. Are, can we be sure that, yes, I know, the people in China, the millions of them, they, they shout, long live Mao, when Mao's picture is paraded in the streets. Oh, they I sing the inter Internationale when there is a parade. But can we be sure that they do these things? Be because, not because, they want, they are afraid of getting but a bullet into their judge? systems. What it is, I'd like to judge? say a couple of words here. You say that um, it probably hasn't the support of the people. I would say that the same is happening in China now as happened in Russia in 1917. Look on what the communist has done to Russia since 1917 to the present date. I think that if, uh, I think that it makes sense to say that the present Chinese government has the support of the people because they are doing, they have done, and they intend to do much to improve the present standard of living. And I want to give you some few facts, too. Uh, you said that, <coughs> how could you be sure that if Red China is admitted in the United Nations, it won't, uh, it, won't be, uh, uh, it won't be improve itself? But 
we know that it is 21 nations in the world that uh, haven't joined the United Nations. It is only among those nations that it has been a war after 1945. It has been between uh, China, the two Koreas, and in Indochina. Well, doesn't this seem to show, what Pear's saying, doesn't this seem to show that if we had have allowed United, Red China into the United Nations, if they'd been in it, there may not have been a Korean War. We could have, then they would have had the foundation for discussion. We would have allowed them, we would have met them on equal grounds. Well, but, but at the, the present, we're not. The communist China, as we see from the recent history, is, has no intentions of abiding by terms and treaties. Yep, you can uh, see from the Korean War. Discussion can, be only, can only be successful when the parties of the, of the discussion have the same aim. The communist aim is not to be a, an honored and a, a respected member of a peaceful community. Their aim is to conquer the world and dominate the, uh, dominate the world and, and rule it by their own, way, own means. Yeah. No, man, man. why, why, why oh. haven't Russia done that alone? If you, if you think that if China is admitted in the United Nations, it would destroy the United Nations from inside. I think Russia could have managed that alone, but I'll tell you something else too, that none of the nations in the UN have tried an open revolt against another, the, another country. Maybe it is right that Russia supported the Chinese uh, with weapons during the Korean War, but they did, it in dis they did it discreetly. Why? Because they didn't want to, uh, to conflict with the laws of membership in the UN. See? Well then, isn't that equivalent to sabotage or furtive, furtive action that is uh, secretly planning against the UN? But listen, what would have happened if uh, Korea and, and uh, the Red China had been members of the UN? Then Russia wouldn't have been able to do it um, secretly. If they had wanted, they must have done it openly. And then they had shown that the purpose isn't, uh, isn't peace, you see? And may I go back to Leslie's suggestion before that? If Red, China, if Red China had, had been a member of the UN, there mm -hmm. would have been no Korean War because there would have been a, some basis of agreement. Mm -hmm. Now, Red China, as I said, hasn't shown any intention to abide by terms and agreements. As shown from the Korean armistice, look, the Korean armistice uh, provi provided that there should be no air bases built in North Korea and that there should be no communist jet planes flown into North Korea and that prisoners should be repatriated. After, uh, after a few, from few months, guess what? Communist China builds air bases in North Korea. Just, and then she just flies a moment, MIGs. Just a moment, please. You say that the uh, armistice meant between, between Korea yeah. and, um, and Red China. But still, you, you don't you see that if Korea and the United Nations have an armistice meant with Red China, they've actually acknowledged the Red China government. So why could you go on seeing, uh, saying that we couldn't acknowledge it, we've already done it? And isn't it then correct to, uh, to let those 600 million Chinese be represented by a government which is acknowledged by the rest of the I UN? don't think that the Red Chinese government now is representative of the people. No, but look, Ramon, you're just talking about the present time, about all of this Red China breaking all these armistices. We're talking about, we're hoping for the future as well. I mean, we, we're hoping that there will be a future, that but is. But people say that the future is sometimes based on the past. Is it? Well, it is, isn't it? Now, mm -hmm. Russia, now you just think at the end of 1945, USA supported Russia. They were the best of friends and everything. Well, can't we hope that perhaps Russia and, and the USA haven't been always bosom friends in the last few years, but just the same, we can hope. In the, you can see in the differences between, say, for Britain and France. They were deadly enemies for years. And then you see this gradually swing away. It happens in the past. Well, can't it happen in the future? Can't Red China gradually change? And probably in a few years hence, we'll be saying, oh, Red China, you're the best little boy in the world. That's what happens. Well, the, the biggest and the most important change in the nature of warfare uh, between World War I and II and uh, the Cold War now is Whereas the past war was caused by the territor territorial ambition of a country, now it is, a, it is an ideological war. See? But do you think that they're going to succeed in that ideology? I don't know what the youth in your country like, but I, I'm quite sure that the youth in my country would just never accept their ideology. They'll, they'll just never accept communism in any form. I mean, you say about them working underground and that they're not opening their methods and everything, but the people, the people in Australia, anyway, they're, they're educated. 
They know what, what to fear in communism, but they're also confident of their own ideals, of their own standards, and they'll never accept it. Well, but, but the Chinese people once accepted the communism. Yes, but and why? They, they weren't educated like we are. They didn't have the same opportunities. That's why they accepted communism. Yes, I got, <coughs> yes now they accept it, and they have, they have gained more food, and now they want freedom back. Now what we do? Uh, shall we do? Uh, shall we do something good for the regime and weaken the people, or shall we do? Uh, shall we do something against the regime and help the cause of the people? No. Now listen, I tell you. Uh, don't you think that our people, uh, when they, the first thing they need when they have bad conditions of life, that's to improve the standard of living. When they have improved the standard of living, they suddenly discover, well, we want freedom. And when they want freedom, that is what hap will happen in Russia sooner or later, according to my opinion at any rate. People will be tired, they will feel that they are under a stress all the time. And then they will, well, they want to, to get rid of this and they will quit with the present government. You see, and the thing that China need now, that is food and clothes, and then later on they will be tired of the present government and quit with it. But why shouldn't we accept this government now in order to prevent further uh, terrible wars and things like that? Well, certainly Red China can't improve the social conditions by maintaining concentration camps and torturing the citizens who disagree with the government. But Roman, you're <coughs> emphasizing one side of communism. You're forgetting that there's another side of it, that they are trying to give something to the people. They're trying to give them food, something that the people have wanted for so long. And I think this, look, Perhaps we're not sure whether the Red China government does represent the people. Maybe a few of the people, maybe they don't have any say in supporting that people openly. But I'm quite sure that there must be many people in China who, who feel that the communist government have done some good for them. Well, the West up until now have only exploited China. They've done nothing for them. Well, can't we as democracies offer our first hand of friendship to China and by allowing them into the United Nations can't you see what a psychological if, effect if China it has would on only, the people? We, if China would only offer her friendly hand to us, her hand of friendship to us, she has always been provoking war. But you're saying tit for tat, if you don't give me your hand, I'm not going to give you yours. Well, well we're supposed to be Christians, we're supposed to be tolerant, we're supposed to be willing to give. Not tolerant of evil. No. Evil cannot be tolerated. All right, no, we agree with you that evil cannot be tolerated, but are you saying that the, Chi the red Chinese government are wholly evil? You're, you're not seeing that there can be some good and within that evil. I, I can't see why you can't say that, right, red China, maybe they're, they're not supported by the people wholly, they don't give the people a say in the government, maybe they haven't done all that they could have done for the people, they've provoked wars, but just the same, the people have accepted them in the first place because there was no other alternative. We didn't give them anything. Well, well then, if we accept Red China, what do we do with the other government? The, the nationalist China? Which well, is does the it represent the people? It was elected by the people. Yes, no, and always. it was discarded by it too. Mm. Yes, what oh, about, to, may I just oh, say I this? Say that what about that question? If you should let communist China into the UN, what do you do with Formosa? Well, couldn't, couldn't it be arranged? I mean, you have to make a kind of compromise. Either we could regard um, Formosa as one country and Red China as one, because China actually has got a seat in the United Nations. The question is just, is uh, it going to be occupied by the nationalist or the Red Communists? No, the only solution would be that uh, the Red Chinese uh, government represent the people in the real Chinese territory and that Formosa is regarded as one country and represented by the nationalist government. Well, uh, if you really want to know what, uh, whether the Chinese nationalist government is, uh, has been discarded by the people, why, why don't you hold an, a free election on Chinese mainland and see the result? Do you, do you think well, the United Nations is supposed to adhere to democratic principles? Yes, one well of the democratic it's principles it's is the holding of free elections. Why not hold free elections first in Red China before we, get, we, we admit them to the UN? I think that if you hold an election in Red China, it would be in favor of the communists. Because the communists have done more good to the 
general Chinese than a nationalist did. Well, even uh, so, we should I, hold the election. I have at least uh, a fact and an experience. As a fact, uh, 14,000 Chinese communist uh, prisoners of war chose to, st uh, to go to Formosa, which, uh, as you say, was corrupt and was discarded by the, by the people. And the 14,000 is an absolute majori majority of the, of the whole number of the POWs uh, captured in the Korean War. And uh, according to my e experience, uh, we can see many uh, we, we can see many North Korean refugees coming from uh, North Korea, and they hate communism more than we do. And I, I for one, has spent uh, three three months on, under communist communist rule. And what they did, they captured uh, citizens and branded them as capitalistic landlords. But the Interesting fact is only uh, less than half, half of the citizens owned any land and they, they recruited young men into the army, what they called voluntary army and they, they enforced us to give food and labor and with the ever-present word voluntarily and they, all, they always said uh, end justifies the mean, means. Now <coughs> if you uh, let the Chinese communists into the United Nations, uh, they will they will sabotage the United Nations program, and they will do their best to achieve their aim. And after they uh, they finish their world conquest, they will they will say, "Oh, we we have succeeded. Now the end justifies the means." To that, I uh, add Lenin's statement that it is necessary to use ruse, cunning, unlawful, deceitful method, and veiling of the truth just as long as to fulfill their but, ends. But don't you see that? Uh, I, I agree that it is inhuman to send thousands of people to prisoners camp to kill people, but um, I think that if you should gain something for the mass, somebody has to, somebody has to suffer. Russia would never have improved as it, it, is, as it has done if somebody hadn't suffered. Exactly. I mean, it will always be some people who think that, well, <clears throat> this isn't to the benefit of myself. Then a revolt against it, if the revolt has succeeded, it wouldn't have been to the benefit of the whole group. Why, why don't you then discard the Norwegian democracy and adopt a dictor dictatorship and because we don't carry need out it. effectively... Well, you can, uh, you can uh, improve your no, living standard more. No, okay. because, I mean, the Norwegians are an educated people. We have a high standard of education. When Russia get it, she will also think in the same way. I mean, people who have their who have a high standard of living and a, a high standard of education, they will feel uh, uh, that they need freedom. But it, that isn't the most important thing of, of people who are poor. <coughs> no, uh, it is not the, not the highly educated people alone who feel that uh, freedom is important. The freedom is a precious thing to everybody, educated or not educated. Well, as a Korean, I, I've lo uh, I've lo uh, I once lost both freedom and food. but. After that experience, we never sell freedom for, uh, for I mean, uh, not sure. well, that's for food. Well, we're saying. You see, as a Korean, you've come in contact with communism, so you're probably biased against it. But can't you see, that's the whole point. You said yourself, you'd never sell your freedom. For, because you've got it now. You know what it is like to have personal freedom. Well, those people in China just haven't any idea what it's like. The people in Russia haven't. Before 1917, before their revolution, they were in a state of feudalism. Now they've, they've gradually evolved, they're coming along, they're gradually coming to the state that we are. And that once those people have got their, the, the food they want, once they've got a standard of living like we have got, not only the educated people, but ordinary people, then they're going to want their freedom and they're not going to want to sell it once they've got it. That's the point we're saying, communism can't last. Well, uh, I don't know what make you think in that way, but uh, I believe that uh, people behind the Iron Curtain want freedom, and our duty is to, to help them get freedom. And not not at the sake, if we're going to do it at the sake of a war, surely. Well, I, I hate war uh, more than anyone else, I think, but the, the best way to, uh, to prevent war is not, I mean, not fearing it too much. It is uh, to, ma uh, to make ourselves so strong that uh, the communists may realize that it is a, a foolish dream to try to conquer us. Then a Cold War, that would mean that the Cold War would go on without too strongly opposed 
uh, uh, parties that will stand against each other. And too strongly, it must be an explosion sooner or later. Would that be to the benefit well, of, if, if of you, human beings? If you really don't want an uh, explosion and you are so afraid of war, uh, you, you can surrender to communism and live under this slavery. Yeah, we're not saying that we no, can that's not what you're trying. Communism. We're saying that to do away with the war, we're hoping to do away with war, and we have faith in the United Nations as an instrument of doing away with war. Well, the only way we can have that is for all countries to come into the United Nations and for them to take part in the United Nations because people just don't want war. I don't care whether you're a communist, whether you're a Russian or anything else, you don't want war. The communist people have done too much in Russia. I'm glad you raised that point, Leslie, because there are 21 nations, I believe, right now who yes. want to be members of the UN. Uh, we've been talking a lot about China tonight, but after all, that's only one of many. Uh, perhaps we'll have another program no. on that. We're, I'm sorry, we're running out of time, but I think each of you should have a chance now to sum up your viewpoints or admit that you've been convinced if you have been. Who well, uh, I've tried my very best to, to tell you how terribly wrong you are. Uh, I hope you will reconsider when you go home. <laughs> <laughs> I would maybe reconsider, but I would never agree with you. My opinion is that, as Mrs. Waller stated, it is a question of principle, and nobody could make me believe that when millions of people are starving in the world, uh, we could have peace. Peace, uh, uh, suffer, and want of food will always be the roots of peace. Well, you, you cannot have when millions of people are suffering under slavery. Well, still... Give Roman a chance. Uh, I think that if the Red China can't... Can abide with its promises to the other nations, it can't abide to its promises to the people to give them the food that they're asking for. Well, I think that if you're going to exclude Red China, if you're going to say, no, we can't have universal membership, then what applies to Red China applies to Russia. And once you do away with Russia and with other countries that have a different point of view, if you're not going to allow them to come in and discuss with you, then I think the United Nations fails and I think we may as well all go home and dig our grave. I disagree. <laughs> Fine, fine. <laughs> Is that your last word, Peg? Yes. You disagree. Well, perhaps we can we'll have another discussion. We'll continue the discussion on. later on, be sure. <laughs> I'm sure you aren't done with it yet. <laughs>